You either have to go with the flow and figure it out, or you're going to become obsolete. I decided to embrace it. You can get faster and better. You just can't be lazy. I, I love the extra arm with two drinks, and I'm like, oh, this person is an alien. No, a prompt shouldn't be like reading War and Peace. A prompt should be like picking up Reader's Digest. Every day of the, the entire span of my career, I've gotten to play in a sandbox with my favorite toys. Gemini is a, is a joke. Hi, and welcome to the 91 Day Success Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan, and today I have got, well, Ken's probably my newest best friend. We met just a while back in Mexico. We were both speaking in an event, and if you ever meet somebody and you just really hit it off, Ken and I have absolutely hit it off. It's it's like we, we could talk for hours about AI and advertising, and we have on many occasions uh, since we met a couple months ago. But I am so thrilled to have Ken with us today. Ken is my favorite ad guy. Uh, he's going to share a couple ads with us a little bit later that he's done that are amazing. But Ken, before I tell everything, thank you for joining us today. I'm so thrilled to have you. It's the second time we've talked today, which is super cool. It really is. And thank you for having me. You know, it's the 91 days and I was hoping we could do it a little quicker. Could we make it 89? We could do 89. I just don't <laughs> want it to be 90. That just seems a little too, too simple, you know? Yeah, for sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself. For people that don't know who you are, Ken, and sure. don't know about some of your amazing work, give us, uh, give us the background. Okay, so I am a complete failure by my family standards. Um, I did not go to medical school, become a doctor or a lawyer like all typical Jewish kids in New York did. Uh, I decided to pursue a life of creative. Uh, I knew from a very, very early age that I was going to go into radio and specifically making ads. So let me paint a picture. I grew up in Queens, New York. And I was the kid who, when my family would go to the beach, I would be in my bedroom nerding out, creating mixtapes, but not of songs. I would make mixtapes of radio ads that I heard and recorded. And then I would figure out what in those ads worked and like why they sounded good and what made people want to buy things. And I don't know why I was attracted to that, but I remember very distinctly, there was a pitch man by the name of Jerry Carroll who did the ads for an electronic store in New York called Crazy Eddie's. Now, eventually, Eddie, the guy who owned the place, went to, went to prison, and the store went bankrupt. The chain went bankrupt. But Jerry Carroll was the ultimate pitch man, and he could sell anything. And I'm like, wow, listening to these messages, why do people react to them? Why do they buy stuff? So I was really fascinated with advertising from a super early age, like, like 10, 11, but started writing ads when I was about 12. So it was just my my career path right from, from the start. And I avoided doing all of the other things. My friends would be out playing baseball and going to soccer practice or whatever. And I was just in my bedroom making ads. And so it was it was a little weird, but I knew that that was where I wanted to go in life. And so fast forward, I wound up working at uh, a local radio station in New Jersey, then Manhattan, then my career just took off from there. And I have worked now throughout the 40 years I've been in advertising for small brands that you've never heard of and some of the world's biggest brands, um, Frito-Lay, M&Ms, Budweiser. I've worked with Major League Baseball, the NBA. I've worked with every NFL team and I've created over a hundred thousand ads throughout my career. So I, I've done a lot and I still love it. Like, you know, Jonathan, when I, when I think about it, I don't grasp how I've done this for so long, but I still wake up in the morning excited to do what I do. I love making That's ads. Awesome. And so 40 years into it, I'm still nerding out on this stuff. Absolutely love it and, and love your story. And as you know, from our many, many conversations, love your incredible skill sets. Everybody wants to hear about AI. AI is the thing, you know, I'm into AI, you're into AI. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I love about what you do, Ken, is you talk to people about how to leverage it for ads specifically. So many people are out there talking all this conceptual, whatever, and it's really hard to get your arms around. It doesn't make any sense. And you've got so many different things you've done. Talk to me about as a professional who's no longer 29 years old, nor am I, but that this brand new thing, this tools out there called AI, 
how do how do you think businesses should be embracing that specifically in your case in the realm of advertising well uh, let me back up first because i think contextually this is important sure when when ai first really hit the scene so let's say early early 2023 is when it started to really roll out i saw ai start to damage and and decimate one of my businesses and the reason it did is because people started evolving like flocking to it like fast they were like oh i'm going to try this new thing and then they discovered it wasn't that great it was early days right fast forward the iterative knowledge of ai has just gotten i mean it's just exponentially better oh, than yeah. it was even a month ago right we we have two choices in life choice one is we bury our head in the sand and we pretend the thing that is happening isn't happening right it, it's like if you were in an episode of the walking dead and you stood there and you didn't move you're going to get eaten by a zombie you either have to go with the flow and figure it out or you're going to become obsolete Horse and buggies were replaced by cars. Uber is now really replacing taxis all over the United States and, yeah. and probably other countries. So you, you have to figure out how to integrate the new thing into the thing you're doing. And so for me, rather than fighting the technology, I decided to embrace it. And so while I was going through a really rough time during um, the early days of AI, I was going through cancer treatment. I, I had a lot of time on my hands to really dive into what AI's potential was. Was it great? No. Was it good? Yeah. Could it help speed up my iterative creative process? Ah, yes, 100% it could. So over time, I figured out how to utilize AI to speed up creative thinking, to help me come up with ideation for new projects and then take those ideas and now I can really create something magical with them. And so for me, it's all about how do we utilize these tools to speed up the work we do and make us more efficient? Because if we're more efficient, we actually make more money because we're not working as many hours to get the same result. If something took 40 hours before and you can get it done in four, that is a massive shift in your in your time and and your ability to to do work. You brought up another question, and that was great. Is so many people are worried that AI not they're they're happy about the opportunity to save time, but they're worried AI is going to deliver subpar quality. And I get why they're worried because so much of what's come out thus far with AI has been crap. Um, yeah. You know, it's way too many people are focused on fast and not good. Give me your perspective. Is all AI stuff junk or is it possible to actually use AI to do things faster and maybe even better? Uh, you can get faster and better. You just can't be lazy. And so mm. I learned very quickly that lazy prompting causes really bad output. And so at first I would play with it and I would give it a line of do this, write this, make this. And I realized that I was getting really cruddy results because the input I was giving it wasn't sufficient to give me output that was that had any quality to it. So mm -hmm. over time, I started to learn the nuances of how to communicate with this computer. And you know, you got to remember, AI is a computer. That's yeah. all it is. And it's a series of computers. And so if you program a computer with garbage, you get garbage on the back end, oh. right? Garbage yep. in, garbage out. So, so I started to think like, okay, if programmers were programming something and put garbage in, they're gonna get garbage out. So if I was going to do this, how would I do this? So I, so I backed up and I said, okay, in, in, in my world of advertising, when a client has us working on a project and we need to create something from scratch, they fill out a creative brief. And th that creative brief gives us really detailed information so that we know the target audience, what the goal is, what we're trying to accomplish with the ad, um, what platforms the ads are going to be on. Is it going to be an out of home, a TV, right? And so all of that information is vital to AI producing the result that gives you the 
the thing that you're looking for. Right. And so, but, but, but what I have discovered, and, and I think you've seen this too, Jonathan, is people tend to overcomplicate their instructions. All the time. Yes. Right. You don't need to overcomplicate. You just need to be thorough. And there's a difference between thorough and overcomplicated. Thorough is all of the necessary information to get the output you're looking for. Complicated is that same thing, but telling it the steps it needs to take to get there. And after this, do this. And after this, do that. And, you know, when you do that, you're literally putting noise into the system versus telling it, here's what I need to create and here's the information to create it. Once it gives you the initial output, then you can start to create iterative changes because, oh, I don't yes. like this. And, and I'll give you a perfect, perfect example. Right now, I have developed a, a custom GPT and mm -hmm. that custom GPT has one goal. It is to create artwork or visual art prompts that I can use in either Free Pick Picasso or Mid Journey. The goal of this is to always produce a very consistent type of image output every time. When it started producing the output, I noticed that in the scenes, the, the, the people that were there always had a cocktail in their hand or a cigarette in their hand. And I'm like, hmm, why? Because it was emulating a 1960s Mad Men style vibe. Oh. Right? So all I had to do was tell the prompt, hey, I need to update this knowledge so that I don't have people consuming alcohol or smoking cigarettes because these images would be not flagged in the U.S., but they couldn't show up in Dubai. They could right. not show up in, in several countries. And so yeah, you, then you create that modification. But you can't think through all of the things until you start to see the output. Once you Correct. start to see the output, you can massage the, what you've put into the AI. Do you find, Ken, when you do that, that one of the things that's so important, and again, that's a great example, could you have simply told it to use a Mad Men style without alcohol or cigarettes? And in your mind, would that work or do you need to go more detail? Um, I could have done that had I thought of it, but because I didn't think like how on earth am I going to think through that anytime they're in a scene in a bar, right. they're going to have a drink in their hand. And sometimes they'll have a drink in their three hands, even though there's uh, there, excuse me, their five hands, even though there's two people. Uh, the joy of AI. Yes. I, I love the extra arm with two drinks and I'm like, Oh, this person is an alien. Um, yeah. It, you know, it, it's, you can't think through all of the possibilities and, you know, just like sometimes it, you'll use certain, certain words that for whatever reason, AI believes belong in the image. And yeah. so suddenly you're like, why is this word appearing in the image? Oh, it's part of the styling, but it thinks it needs to be somewhere in the background of the image. So it, it's really, it's, it's very subtle. Once you've figured out how to communicate to AI and you're good at giving it detailed information, your, your quality of your output is going to be far greater, whether it's words or images or video, you know, and, and I'm, I'm playing in all of those spaces. Well, one of the things you're talking about that I like so much is you're talking about training AI. And I think that's something that so many business owners don't understand, or maybe just haven't had the time to think about, but yeah. we need to train AI to sound like us, to sound like our businesses and give them that information. And when we do that, the results can literally be mind blowing. I know that's one of the favorite phrases AI is say, my mind was blown, but literally it's true, almost true. When, when I work with things that are effectively trained to see the quality of the output is yeah. absolutely amazing. Um, it is. And I think what amazes me is how well, again, AI can emulate various things. You and I were having a discussion earlier today, and I won't say who it was about because it's a well-known figure. We had created an, or you had created an avatar for this very public figure. You happen to know that person and you told them about it and, and you said, what do you think? And, and the response was, oh yeah, that sounds just like what I'd say. The fact that AI can do that effectively just kind of blows my mind. Yeah. But I also think it's so important to understand that 
AI doesn't, well, I knew this famous person, it doesn't necessarily know me, Joe Smo, the chiropractor uh, in, you know, Jacksonville, Florida. Right. And that's okay. Don't feel bad about that. You have lots of information that you can upload and share with ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, whatever, to get it to reflect your tone, your style, your mannerisms. And you've demonstrated that consistently with some of the ads that I've seen you done by training it on not only who Ken is, but reminding it about what some of your specific ads are to get it right. to create new content. And and that I think is so incredibly important. You've got, I don't know, you've got some ads to kind of give an example of the type of things that you could train on. Would this be a good spot to share those or not necessarily? Oh, sure. Like, I mean, we, we, can, we can pull some of them up. What are you showing us here, Ken? So I mean, it makes sense to me that I, I asked you for this one because this in my mind was perfect, simple brilliance. Thank you. So I, I made a series of ads for Tampax and the, the ads, yes, a 57 year old man gets to make ads for Tampax. Um, <laughs> and, and the reason is number one, first of all, and I will say this, Jonathan, if, if, if I can just go into this for a moment, I Anywhere, have go ahead. Cons consistently throughout my career been told by, by people that I am one of the best ad writers and creatives for women. I don't know why, maybe it's because I watch HG, HGTV over football. <laughs> um, and I don't think it's specifically women. I think I just know how to effectively communicate things in simple, effective terms. Mm, and so yeah. when, when I was starting to work on this, now you have to understand something, with big brands uh, and, and big agencies, they are still not adopting AI in their copywriting and in their creative process. And the reason is, is that a lot of these big holding companies are fearful of lawsuits for copyright infringement or uh, intellectual property issues. They, they don't fully grasp and they're led by a bunch of attorneys who are paid way too much money to mm. say, don't, don't use this um, versus a little common sense mixed in. So, for example, I'm working on a project right now that's going to be coming live in 2025. And that project, while it says specifically, I can't use AI in the writing of the project, it says nothing about in ideation and development of the ideas. So I'm yeah. utilizing it for the ideation side because that's a really great use of AI. So let's talk about, about Tampax. The ultimate goal of these ads is to message to women 18 to 34 was the target for this that just because you have your period doesn't mean everything in the in your life has to stop now i as a 57 year old man have never had a period however i have a wife i have two daughters i understand what this means for their lives i get it if the ultimate message is that like your period shouldn't be the thing that stops you from doing the thing whatever the thing is how do we communicate that in a way that's simple? My goal, yeah. by the way, is always 10 words or less. That, and I know that's a really wow. weird, yeah. No, that's amazing though. That, that is always my goal because if I can communicate something in 10 words or less, it's, mo it's more likely to be remembered by the person consuming the ad. And I say consuming it because they're consumers. Yes. And so, so how do I effectively communicate the thing about the thing in 10 words or less. And so as I start working through this, I, I thought this was the conversation I had with AI or a version of the conversation I had with AI. I'm working on creative for, a, uh, for Tampax. Uh, it, they, create, they make tampons and other feminine hygiene products. Specifically, the messaging is, revolves around women's periods. And I'm looking for some creative angles on this, blah, 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 blah. So it spits out some ideas. I noticed as it was spitting out ideas, it ended every sentence with the word period followed by the period, right? So as it's doing that, it's just spitting out ideas to me. And all of the sentences ended in the word period because we're specifically talking about right. this. As I'm looking at the word period with the period next to it, I had this epiphany. And at that point I was done with AI because I knew if everything was about periods, every sentence ends with a period. Why don't we make sure that the period in this ad or this series of ads is represented by 
a red period. And so plans shouldn't revolve around a period and the period ends the sentence, but it also is the word that's associated mm -hmm. with what Tampax is for. So that is the first of ad. There's multiple in the series. I'll show you another one. The last thing we should worry about is a period. Again, I go for 10 words or less. That's my goal. Um, and, Brilliant. and then the last one, focus on life, not a period. That's kind of the way I like to advertise. And, but, but utilizing AI to help me get there, uh, it's not that the AI created the ads. The AI gave me creative ideation or ideas, which then led to me creating these ads. And, and it's just like, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I shared how I did the Uni Pizza oven ad. I see you shared the screen. Let's, let's pop I've, her up here. I've got it pulled up. So this is literally from one of my keynote presentations and, uh, and I'm hopefully it's going to, it's going to fly for me. So this is how I used, and you're actually going to see how I used at the time ChatGPT to help with the creative iteration of this project. I said, give me five ways Uni differentiates itself from a typical home oven. And then ChatGPT gives me back temperature range. Uni can reach temperatures as high as 932 Fahrenheit, 500 Celsius, uh, portability, fuel sources, outdoor use, specialization, right? So it gives me all of these great things. And I say, great. I decided to go with the one thing that was like right at the top of the list. Uni pizza ovens can reach temperatures as high as 932 degrees. Um, this is much hotter than most standard ovens, which usually max out at 500. The higher heat enables the uni oven to cook pizzas in just 60 seconds, giving the pizza a distinct, authentic wood-fired flavor and texture. Perfect. So how do I use this? I go back into ChatGPT and I say, knowing the uni is twice as hot as the home oven, give me five single sentence headline ideas that focus on uni temperature versus a home oven. That's how I used AI to do this. Mm, love it's, it. And so um, I'm actually... It's, it's going through that actual slide. This is the, the actual seeing me type it. And here comes their idea, the feedback. Twice as hot, twice as tasty. Uni's 932 degree heat advantage. Redefine your pizza nights with Uni. Um, experience 932 degree difference. How Uni's extreme heat leaves home ovens cold. Double the heat, it. double the heat half the time. Now these are okay but they're not like mm, bite you and memorable. Like if, if you saw this in an ad, you would forget it 10 seconds later because they suck, but they're ideas and they're good ideas. If you know how to take an idea as a thought starter and turn mm -hmm. it into something better. So let's go back to the screen. And I said, all right, knowing that, how do I make an ad? <laughs> And so oh, I love this. I've not seen this, by the way, if you're right, this was not prepped. I have not seen this, but I now want an uni oven. Right. So what I did in the creation of this ad, again, knowing my 10 words or less mantra, everything else is half baked. And to, to help strengthen that sentence, we only show half of the uni oven and then just the logo. It is the cleanest, simplest way to show an ad and to articulate the message. And so, and of course there's text that goes around it, but everything else is half baked. That clearly does what we needed to do. So anyway, Absolutely. So, so that is, that is how I use AI to, um, to get what I need, you know, in terms of creative process and output. It's, um, and, and I did the same thing for, for a Chevy uh, ad. In fact, Jonathan, I'm going to bring it up again. I'll just give you one more, okay, if you don't no, mind. Yeah, I love these. These are great. I mean, just to, I love to see the, the, that at work. Look at, by the way, you can see what year that was based on the color. Um, yeah, I was going to say that was a little while back. That was a while back. So, uh, and ChatGPT then had a 25 message every three hour limit. I remember that all too well. Okay, so with this, I said, Prince wrote a hit song, Little Red Corvette. Write 10 creative headlines in question form that reference the song without naming the song. Don't mention the 2023 Chevy Corvette, Prince, or the song. Little Red Corvette. Make my question aspirational, creative, and clever. It should be <laughs> less than 10 words in length, 
so it can be read on a billboard or digital ad. Specificity in your prompting is so critical, okay? Specificity is everything. So it says, okay, need speed for your heart's fast lane. Ever dreamed of painting the town red? Reignite your midnight rush. All of these were like, ugh, these are like, okay, but they don't ever, they don't, they don't resonate for what I'm trying to accomplish. Right. So I, I said, really okay, are. can you make 10 new questions that talk about the song without mentioning the title? So remember, it has the context of what I initially gave it, but now I'm giving it a redirect. 10 new questions that talk about the song, specifically Little Red Corvette, without mentioning the title. And without fail, has your ride ever inspired a tune? Does your vehicle have its own melody? Have you heard a ballad about your drive? Ah, now I'm getting ideas, right? Ideas are flowing from this. And that turns into this. Ooh. And again, 10 words or less. Does your car have a song written about it? Yeah, didn't think so. Simple. I love that. So that, that is, is so cool. I love to sh I love to see how you bring it all together. Thank you for sharing that, Ken. That is that is absolutely, I think, so productive to show everybody this is how to use AI, guys. And you don't have to be an ad guru like Ken. You you brought up something though that I while you're looking, I want to talk about a moment, and that's sure. using AI for brainstorming and ideation. Yes. I think as a business owner, one of the best things you can use AI to do is exactly that. Um, most of us as entrepreneurs, we have lots of ideas or we're trying to solve for a problem. And right. the ability to, to bring a, a disinterested and unemotional third party in to help us ideate and work through things, in my mind, has immense value. And keep in mind, folks, we're talking something that's going to cost you $20 a month. Yeah. If, if, if you subscribe to all the services I do, you spend about $100 a month. What business wouldn't spend $100 a month to be able to get answers and to be able to get ideas and suggestions? I mean, most of us do that without AI. I just signed up for a, you know, a school group, a SKOL group from one of my peers, and it was $195. I didn't blink an eye because I'm like, right. I know I'll get the value out of that. You're going to um, learn from it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And we can learn so much from AI as it is. Yeah. And you know, the, I use, I use AI tools. Like, so my AI bill, uh, this last month was probably $400, but AI adds so much value that there's a monetary value that it cancels out. So that $400 investment could be a $40,000 return because exactly the speed of iterative output is is what i'm looking for and then i'll share a story that i shared earlier today so um i recently you know i'm a huge fan of claude that's another version yep. uh, competitor to chat gpt and lately i've been running out of usage because i'm using it so dang much and right. i had the opportunity through some insider people that i know to reach out to the company and go hey are there any plans to maybe allow us to spend more money to increase usage and the response was, no, that's not what we're doing. Now, I found another solution I can pay through what they call the API. It's like right. paying by the mile. And that that's just fine with me for the exact reason you just said. If it allows me to gain enough value, that's well worth spending the extra money. And as, as, as we're thinking about AI, I think where we're at in the adoption cycle, it's so important for businesses to remember that because of the fact that we need to know that this is a tool. And in many cases, it'll free up our team and our staff and those much yep. more expensive resources to do more productive and more profitable things. The, yeah. the other thing I want to bring up, and you are I know you're good at this because you and I have spent literally hours on Zoom calls doing this, but talk to me about experimenting with AI. Can a, can a business owner break it? I mean, can, can we break that GPT? You, you can't break it, but you can certainly confuse it. You know, um, as, as you get too deep into a chat or into a project, it, it can stumble because there's so much input that it doesn't know, like it, it loses reference points. Remember, this is a computer. It's a supercomputer, but it's a computer. And so what I like to do is, is take things in chunks. And so if I'm, for example, wanting to, let's say, let's, let's just talk about how a business owner can use AI 
to effectively communicate like they do or they want to do. Okay. It can be as simple as, and I go into way more depth of how to do this, but like, I'll give you the basics. So anybody who's, who's consuming this podcast right now could effectively go do this. Whether it's ChatGPT or Claude, I prefer Claude, by the way, for, for written things. I think it just does a better job. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm going to rate them in order of, by the way, of, of how, how they write. I think Claude is the best. I think ChatGPT is a close second. And Gemini is... Uh, Are they even on the map? Yeah. Gemini is, is a joke. I, I don't know what Google did, but they failed. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Sorry you about that. Any, you know you won't get any disagreement from me. We had that discussion earlier today. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. So you can, you can literally, if you have, let's say you're starting a business. You, mm-hmm. are, you do industrial garage doors. I don't know why I picked that. It's just what popped into That's my head. Good. And... You don't have a website, you don't have advertising, you don't have anything. You could literally start with a new project in Claude and say, I am starting a new business that does industrial overhead garage doors. I don't have any brand messaging or um, a website. I need you to interview me so that I can develop my brand voice, my messaging and my website content ask me questions and then ask me more clarifying questions if my answers aren't sufficient. And I'm just, uh, this is just top of, top of my mind. And then just let it go. It will start the process of interviewing you. Once it's gone through that initial process, ask it to now create a knowledge file from that interview yes. and put that into the knowledge file of the project. Now it has a starting point. Now you can go back and create a new chat in that project that will always reference the content of that project, but it's not going to be confused because there's a thousand things in one long prompt that never ends. Yes. You know, a prompt shouldn't be like reading War and Peace. A prompt should be like picking up Reader's Digest. Absolutely. Or, no, or for I you think, old I... people, TV Guide. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think we're, I think we're both old. If we were, I maybe Reader's Digest is still out, but uh, you know, it's one of those things I haven't seen in years, but yeah, that's yeah. just beside the point. You know, you, you shared so many tips in there that make so much sense, Ken. And, and one of those is we don't have to know absolutely everything no. to tell chat GPT, but we do need to give it background. And by the way, guys, when I say chat GPT, it applies equally to Claude and somewhat unequally to Gemini. We'll just leave it there if you're a Google Gemini fan. Sorry. Sorry, Google, but you you really are capable of better than Gemini. All right. Off my soapbox. When when we're doing that, we need to give it context. I often say, Ken, it's like talking to a team member. If you and I were going to collaborate on a project, I wouldn't walk into your office and say, hey, Ken, let's write an ad and then turn around and walk out while you're going, for what? For who? Who's the audience? Unfortunately, that's what I feel a lot of people do with AI. They jump into AI and they're like, oh, um, yeah, write me an ad for my business. And then they go, all right, well, I know a little bit about you because you talked about three things and it gets it all wrong. And we're like, well, AI is stupid. It doesn't understand it. Right. But if we would just say, I need to write an ad for my business please interview me and ask me the questions you need to give me the best response. Now that prompt would be amazing because ChatGPT or Claude or whatever is now going to literally ask you questions. And when you respond to that, it's going to use that information. Just like Ken, if you and I were working on an ad and I said, Hey, I need you to write me an ad. And you said, Hey, I've got 10 questions. When I answer those, now I can have an expectation. You're going to deliver quality. The same exact thing holds true with AI. And I think, You know, there's a lot of people just miss that part of it as they're going through. They miss the aspect of, oh, yeah, I need to give it context. My wife can't read my mind. I can't read hers. We've been married 20 plus years. It's not getting any better. We got a great marriage, but neither of us can read each other's minds. AI can't read your mind either. And I think that's important to remember. Yeah. And just start with the most basic things, right? If, If you don't know where to start and you're wanting to develop an ad or you're wanting to do to work on your business's brand voice or you want to create an AI uh, persona for your business so that it can handle some of the inbound conversations via a chatbot on your website. Think about like 
you, I, I always have to say this, and, and Jonathan, I've probably said this a hundred times in our conversations. I take off my marketer hat and I put on my consumer hat, mm, right? Yes. What, is, what is the experience you as a consumer, not you as the business owner, want to feel and experience when you're dealing with your company? And that's part of the essence of a brand. A brand isn't a logo. A brand isn't a tagline. A brand is how that business makes you feel, how it feels every time you interact with them. It's, mm. it's the reason why people buy Nike shoes. They've never seen an ad for Nike that has a price point. Everything about Nike is aspirational. It's about achievement. It's about accomplishment. Yes. It's a feeling. And, and so we have to lean into making sure that AI feels like us. And mm. so, so take off your business owner hat and, and as you're working through it, think about who you're actually trying to serve with whatever you're creating and use your instincts, use your gut, use your non-business owner hat. Think, think a little bit like Yoda, you know? Mm. What would they want? Oh, that was good. Mm, oh, that was you. good. To the oh, dark man. side, must you not go? Okay, so I just learned everybody. Ken has a talent that I was not aware of. He has that Yoda voice nailed down. That's oh, you incredible. should hear my Kermit. You should hear my Kermit the Frog. Well, I mean, if you want to offer, I'm listening. Uh, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here tonight on the Muppet Show. We're gonna have a pork roast. Run, Miss Piggy, run! <laughs> Oh, that is awesome, Ken. That is absolutely awesome. Well, I, I want to ask as, as we bring the plane in for a landing here, if sure. people want to reach out and connect with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Ah, oh, man, I am everywhere. If you want to search me up, uh, hit me up on Facebook. Um, certainly adzombies.com is a good place to start. And you can find ways to contact me there or just email me, Ken at adzombies.com, K-E-N at adzombies.com. I will do my best to answer you as efficiently as possible. Um, I learned that from my friend and mentor, Gary Vaynerchuk, who still answers people's emails. And it amazes me that the guy has time to do it. But oh, um, no doubt. Yep, he does. And uh, it's it's really I, I just want to be able to help people. And, uh, you know, it's I love what I do. This is fun for me every day of the, the entire span of my career. I've gotten to play in a sandbox with my favorite toys. And, you know, I, I retired my matchbox cars for creating ads and ads are the toy that I just love playing with. And it's my, it's my go-to. And um, so I just love it. Have fun doing it. Well, it, it shows in the work product and everything else. And I, I want to thank you again for sharing some very practical ways to use AI. I mean, look at this. We, this is, this is not an IT use guys. This is a practical way to ideate and use AI. And Ken, I just want to thank you so much for all the sharing you've done. Sure. Um, and I'm glad I nothing. thought of it. I, I like li to <laughs> literally think of bringing up that, that, uh, that PowerPoint, that keynote that I did. I'm like, Oh, I have the perfect that was great. thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad, happy to do it. And thank you again for having me. So my two key, key takeaways, guys, um, one, 10 words or less for ads, 10 words or less. Um, and don't trust ChatGPT because Ken's a whole lot better at it than ChatGPT is. <laughs> Uh, and the other is ideation. And I'm a huge fan, Ken, you know, about using it for brainstorming and ideation. Yeah. Uh, again, just great stuff. So everybody, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. We would love your feedback. Give us a thumbs up. Tell us what you th like, what you don't. And we'll see you guys on the other side. Make it a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.